Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, well, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Uh, uh, hold. Oh, crap, hang on a minute. Hey guys, uh, sorry about all that nonsense, but now I got it out of my system. Hey, and welcome back to, well, this will be my first, second, third video. Third video on programming. Uh, hang on, left eye. Programming, yeah. Well, so if you followed along this far, the first couple videos, I'm guessing by now you're probably pretty tired of bouncing crap around the screen. So in this video, we'll be bouncing crap around the screen. But don't you worry, much better crap, I promise. Just, I promise you, just watch this. You'll see what I mean. Hang on. All right, gang, well, here we are with the latest program. This is uh, QBA03, that's uh, QBasic Asylum 03. And we'll just run this here, and I'd like you to see, boop, start. Meet my new friend, where is he? Come on, there he is. That's Mr. Derp, or Herp D Derp to be precise, and he's just bouncing around the screen, annoying everybody with that sound. You see the sound down up here, but no problem, we'll just hit the S key and boop, sound off. No more annoying sound, unless you count my voice. But, so now, we just hit S key but again, and it's back on, off, on, off. Simple enough, I'll show you how to do that. And also, of course, meet this little fella here. We gotta bounce him around the screen. Like I was saying, aliens or this idiot. Whatever you wanna uh, put on screen, you can bounce around and so it'll be good. Now let's just stop this, boop. Okay, here. Well, there's our lovely code. Uh, and some of it will be familiar if you've seen the first couple videos. Some new stuff as well. But let's have at it here. All right, to begin with, Maybe I'll zoom in just to here and make this a little more legible. There we go. Okay, so here we've got. Okay, this uh, I mentioned this in my last video. I don't know if it was really in focus, but def int a through z, and again that's define integer or default integer a through z. As mentioned before, if you had said, for example, def int l through z, then anything up to l would be. Uh, would be single precision floating point and then everything else would be it there's also well let's take the i'll show you this here because look check this out help def int all right and if you notice we've got our, our the default data types so here's def int which we used before that's default integer so every variable is integer unless you specify otherwise uh, and then of course you got default long that's a long integer so up to uh, i guess a billion whatever numbers but again, no fractional part, just integers. Now, if you've got single and double, these are floating point uh, 2.7, 9.385, whatever. Uh, and single is the typical floating point, double, twice that. Then, of course, define st or default string. All of your variables will be defined as string by default. Uh, so you can use, use those wherever, whenever you want to, but I like the def int. It just speeds things up. Let's just close this window. All right, so def int. A through Z. So all our variables are going to be integer. And we can override that, but we don't need to do that right now. I'll show you later. Next, we got key. We're defining key 15. Now, this statement here says key 15. There's 15, actually, is it, I don't know, a bunch of, of usable uh, user programmable keys, starting with 15 up to, I think, 21. But in any case, you select your key number. Then you put this garbage in here, and that tells QBasic which key it's going to be. In this case, character 0, that tells it whether a shift key is pressed, or an alt key, or a control key. In this case, none of them are pressed, so it's just 0. Then character, that's the actual screen code. In this case, 31 is the S key. <clears throat> so this, this statement here defines key 15 as the S key. Now this one turns key 15 on so it can trap whatever's happening with key. And then here we got on key 15 go sub sound toggle. So this sets up the key, tells QBasic what key we'll be using. This turns it on, makes it active. And then when the key is pressed, we go to the sound toggle, which is another subroutine. We'll get to that as we get to it. Next we got dim derp. What is this? Well, derp, if you'll notice, this is another variable. In this case, it's got this number after it. This is actually an array. An array is like a variable, except that where a variable can hold one value, like 17 or 37 or 95, an array can hold multiple variables, in this case, 965 of them. 
And that is just a, a section of memory set aside to hold our image of Mr. Derp. You don't need to worry too much about that. We'll talk about uh, variables again in another, another video. So again, X1 is 50, Y1 equals 50, H1 and V1. These are our position and directions as we mentioned in, in other videos. Sound, SMD, that's a variable that tells the, the QBase that the sound is currently on. And then we go sub, draw derp. This is another subroutine down here, which we'll get to, and that draws the actual derp character. Then we have a line which draws a box around the screen and locate print sound on. So all this is, by the way, if you notice, I don't know if you can see here, but I got, these are all apostrophes here, initialized program, which anything that starts with an apostrophe uh, is, Cubase calls it a, uh, a comment. Basically, it ignores it. it. Ignores it. It's just something that is for the programmer to see and to help them understand what's going on. But in this case, I use it as a header to section uh, section off my program. So this is the initialized part where all the stuff happens before the program starts. Then we got the main program. And just full screen this here. There we go. Main scroll program. And if we scroll down. Here are the subroutines I talked to you about for screen 13. This is actually to draw the derp character. And then we move them around. There's the sound toggle I mentioned. So we go to the main program here. And as again, it's a do loop like most programs. We start here. We go sub move derp. That's the subroutine that moves the character around the screen. Next is a four, Z, a four next loop which is z one to one thousand and then next z by the way if you notice oh excuse me i'm totally dry here if you notice i've got four z equals one to a thousand next z now this is not necessary that will work perfectly fine i just like to put the z there so i know which one it is in case i nest one loop inside another i know let's see i've ended this loop and what if i got loop for a is one to a thousand next a this way i know this next goes with this four and it just helps keep them straight when you got one loop it's not an issue but it's a good habit to get into then of course loop while in key equals nothing we've discussed that in the past basically just loops until a key is pressed then we hit system which ends the program so let's take a look at our first subroutine draw derp which is right here we got the derp label there draw derp First uh, line sets it into screen 13. Uh, screen mode 13 is uh, graphics. Again, as I mentioned, it's uh, what, 300 by 320 by 200 pixels, 300 columns, 200 rows, and 16. No, actually, it's 256 colors, my mistake. So what are we doing? We got this in, in graphics mode now. Now we use a bunch of circle commands, as you can imagine, draws a circle. Well, that just draws the outside of the Mr. Derp, and here's his eyes, draws them. Now, where's the one? Uh, okay, if you'll notice, I think it's one of these here, but here's a line that draws, draws a straight line. This paints the, the character with specific color. Circles here. Now, this is it for a smile, I believe, and if you notice here, all these, these uh, extra parameters here's the circle there's the location the size where is the one with the this one actually is the one the circle the location the size the color and then what's all this nonsense well that tells q basic where to start and where to end the circle you see you don't have to uh draw a complete circle we'll just put stop in here for the moment run this and it'll stop at that point okay now we can go to view here's another handy thing that you can see up here View, output screen. And what have we got so far? There it is. Yeah, if you notice, there's a circle that his, his main, uh, his face, whatever. This is his smile. And if you notice, it starts and stops. Well, that's what the extra, the extra parameters are for. And you can, that's in radians, which you can, you can uh, experiment with that later. But that just, it starts and it stops at that point. So you don't have to draw a full circle. Now we'll get rid of this. The stop we don't need that and again you experiment with different colors and different uh, sizes what have you but basically this this routine just draws the, the character sets so in screen mode draws the first circle and then all his eyes his mouth everything else a line that's the line around oh that's the line from the top of his mouth a paint 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 the 
turns the, the different colors of his face, his eyes, etc. More circles, excuse me, paint and a piece set. Where did, um, okay, the line. This one here. This line, if you notice, it's got the start, this point here, and it's a diagonal. So it would be like a diagonal line. However, we got the color 15 and then BF. That stands for box fill. So what it does is it draws a box. Instead of just a line from here to there, it draws a box on screen and then fills it with color 15. So that becomes his tooth. So let's do this. Uh, do, do, do. Nope, <laughs> I'm used to the touch screen. Uh, st stop. Okay, now we'll run this. And start. Again, view, output screen. What do we got here? Go on, DOS box. Quit wasting my time. There he is, Mr. Derp. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Uh, do, 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 do. Where are you? There? Oh, there he is, Derpy. Okay. Now, the line we were talking about, that's his tooth right there. It would be just di a diagonal line, but with the uh, parameter BF, that's box, draws a box, and then F is fill, so it fills it with white. Otherwise, it would just be a white rectangle. All right, so let's zoom back out here. This here, zoom back out, see the screen again. Come on, zoom out. There we go. So that draws dirt. Now we've got him drawn, and what are we gonna do with him? We need to we need to get him and stuff him into that array derp I was telling you about earlier. So if we notice it says get, that's the, the top left and the bottom right corner of the image, and it says gets the kid the array the section of the screen and stuffs it into the derp array that's so we can put that on screen later now we clear clear screen because we're done we want to start our program so we come up here do sub or sorry go sub draw derp that's get that out of the way before the program starts we've drawn the image stuffed it in the, the memory in that derp array now we're ready to use it so we'll go to do go sub move derp this is where we actually move him around and let's go move derp. There he is. Typical stuff. If x is x1 is less than 2 or x1 is greater than 271, then h equals h1 times negative 1. Okay, you've seen all of that before in the previous videos. That just calculates the next location for him. But look at here. If sound equals 1, then sound 880.5. What's that? Well, if the sound variable, which you saw that was set up to 1 up there, if it's one, then we do the sound 880. That's 880 cycles per second, or hertz. It's like a high A on the keyboard. And then 0.5 is a fifth of a second, I guess? Half a second? No, half a second, duh, 0.5. That's if derp hits the, I guess, the either side, then it makes that sound. And notice if Y, if it comes up here and bounces off the side then if sound is one then sound equals 440 that's an octave lower and again for a fifth of a of a second calculates the next location now we put derp p set what does that mean well derp is the actual array that's our image and p set stands for pixel set in other words whatever else is on screen it's going to just override it and obliterate it this way you get a flicker free image and it looks good and it's not opaque or translucent. Then for D equals one to 2000, again, just delay next D and put derp P set again, same place. We put it again, that makes it disappear. So we calculate our, our location and whether we've hit a boundary, whether we need to play a sound, but this puts the new location. Then we put derp, put derp on screen. We wait a second here for this 4NX, 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 so you can see them, and it, uh, it kind of reduces the flicker. Then we put derp in the same spot, makes them disappear. Go through the whole thing again, uh, check if he's hit a boundary, play the sounds if necessary, next location, put them on screen, and then there you have it. So that's about all there is for the move derp subroutine. Let's zoom in on uh, the sound toggle here. And this is kind of interesting. All right, so sound toggle, <clears throat> sound equals one minus sound. Now this is kind of similar to the H equals H times negative one. Instead of going from one to negative one, what this does, it takes sound, whatever it is. Starts out as one. So now it's one minus one, then it equals zero. Now the next time this, this executes, sound will be zero. 
So sound equals zero, sound equals one minus zero, or back to one. In other words, every time this line is, is encountered, the sound variable goes from one to zero to one to zero back and forth. So if we, we saw up here, if sound equals one, then sound. This is how we turn the sound on and off when we hit the S key. So locate one and two. If sound equals one, then print sound on, else print sound off. So obviously if it's one, the sound is on, print sound on. If it's zero, then locate the same spot and print sound off. There you go. That's about it. it, it that's about all there is for this program. Let's just zoom this right out and we'll play it again. Sam, run, start. So as I mentioned, we got a little character bouncing around the screen. Now we could have variable, we could have multiple character bouncing around the screen. Two Mr. Derps or aliens or monsters or who knows, good guys, whatever. But he's just bouncing around the screen. And then of course, we got the S key. You saw where we set up the S key with the key command. Hit it, and the sound is now off. Now it's on, now it's off, now it's on. Simple as that. Hit any key to end it, and there you go. Now, there we go. Bring up another piece of code, code. Just hang on one second. It's a little more advanced, and I think you'll enjoy this one. One second. Okay, so here we got Mr. Bur Mr. Derp bouncing around the screen again. Now, but look here, we got this little dude. What's he all about? Well, if I go over, I got keys right here, left, right, up, down keys, and I can move him around the screen, up, down, left, right, just like Mr. Bur Derp does. Only I'm using the keys. Now the arrow keys, they're not part of the typical keyboard. They're like an extension thing, so they gotta be treated differently, and I'll show you how that's done. But now, we see Mr. Derp bumps around, and here's our little dude. But look there, what happened to there? This guy, he doesn't he's not bound by the, the walls of the, the room here. He can just well that it comes down here and boop, warp right back up here, and then goes over to the left, bing, warps over to this side. He can go wherever he wants to because he and he's special. It's kind of like the Pac-Man character bloop, when he goes through the tunnel on the edge of the board. And we'll see how that's done. So let's stop this here. Actually, just turn off this annoying sound. Boom. All right, so from the top. Now, I can zoom in just to here. I don't want to put anything. Come on, zoom. Make it a little easier. There we go. So again, our def int, that's default integer, key 15, character zero. Now this is, uh, you've seen this all before. This is the no, uh, what am I saying? No shift, no alternate, etc. And then character 31, that's the scan code for the S key. Key 15 is on, and then on key 15, we go sub to the sound toggle. Now, these, again, this is a notice that says character 128, plus character 72. So key 17 is set up as the up key. That's what well, you saw, I was using the keys over here. And <clears throat> key 16, this, this defines what key we're going to use, in this case the up key. Now key 16 on, we turned it on so it's, so it's actually active. And then on key 16, we go sub the up routine. Similar, key 17, here's the scan code for the down arrow. We turn key 17 on, and then on key 17, when we press key 17, we go down. Same thing with left, same thing with right. Now there's dim derp. This is all from the previous code there that just puts uh, creates an array for Mr. Derp to go into. Sets up our variables, sound, etc., etc., etc. But let's take, here's one more thing. Direction is zero. So at first, he's not moving anywhere. Let's just uh, take a look at the up, down, left, right uh, subroutines. Because I think you've seen everything else before. Oh well, move, dude. We'll we'll show you that one here. Uh, okay, oh, it's simple. This is up right here. Up direction equals up, and then return. That's all it is. When you hit the up key, it comes down to this routine up, or the line label, I should say up. Notice it says up with a colon. That's a line label. Direction equals up, and then return. Now we hit the down key, down, direction equals down and return. Same with left, direction equals left, right, direction equals right and return. Now, here's where we move our dude. So we, uh, we go sub move derp, and then we go sub move dude. Now the move dude, it looks at the variable uh, direction. 
where is it? Select case direction. Now, if notice this is something new. This is select case instead of a bunch of if statements. If direction equals this. If direction equals that. If direction. If is great if you have just like two two possible uh, conditions: yes or no, left or right, up or down. And you can nest a bunch of nifs, but it gets it just gets ugly in my my opinion. So I like to use select case. So what I do, first of all, we print space, and then we go to select case direction. Now, notice when we hit the up, down, and keys, we set direction to either up, down, left, or right. So if it's up, then we remove, we select one from Y2, moving him up. And if it's less than three, then Y2 equals 23. In other words, if we come up and we get less than three, it pops him back down here. It removes, or reduces, y2 every time it's pressed but if it gets less than three it brings them down here sets it back to 23 that's how he warps up if we're hitting down it just adds one to y bringing them down and if it gets more than 23 brings it back to three so it comes down here if we're over 23 poop, pop them back up on screen warp 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 and then left and right same thing instead of y we're changing the the x variable to let minus one moves them left, hence the, the variable left, and plus one moves them right. Again, if it's less than two, then it brings it to 39, warps them over here. If it's greater than 39, he warps over it that way. That's how he rolls around the screen and warps. So, and select. Basically, you got select case. There's a variable we're checking, direction. And the case is up, or case down, or case left, or case right, whichever it happens to be. It does that, and then end select. So it's just a nice, neat, compact way of, of choosing from a number of variables or a number of options. Okay, so lo locate character two and print, or I'm sorry, locate y2, x2. Remember, this is text, not graphics. And then we print character one. So what's this all about? Well, let's take a look here. Help, uh, contents, and character, ASCII character codes. Now, if look, uh, well, S, we were looking at S earlier, uh, where did it go? Well, that's ASCII, not scan codes, but each each number, each character, uh, less than, greater than, each letter, all these things, they all have ASCII codes to tell the computer, okay, if it's 56, then print an 8. If it's 72, print a capital H. In this case, we're using 001. That's this little guy here. That's the little happy face. And this is a happy, well, we can do this. Check this out. Uh, escape out of here. And where are we going? Come on, where are I? Okay, character one. So let's run this and we see what we got. We got this happy little dude here. Kind of looks like uh, hollow with white eyes, white mouth. But let's do this. Character two, and run again. Now he's positive. He's got black eyes, black mouth, and white body, white face. So then we can just choose whatever character we want. But basically, if we go, let's try 72. Start. Let's see what this will be. Okay, letter H. So we're not actually printing graphics with this guy. We're just printing text. It just happens that character one and char character two happen to be a little happy face. Now there are other boop, other characters that in the you saw in the, in the list there. The ASCII code. Let's make this two because I like that a little better. Uh, help. Contents. ASCII codes. Now I'll go with one because that's the standard. There's a heart, there's diamond, clubs, and spades, obviously like for cards. These little dots, and oh, there's the male symbol, female symbol, uh, uh, musical notes, all kinds of crazy things in here. And if you scroll down, see here's our, our letters again, all the way up to the parentheses, everything else. But let's take a look. There's even extended character codes where you got little boxes and upside down things and quarters and, and uh, um Foreign numbers, or foreign letters, excuse me. All these little for drawing images on screen look like text or look like graphics, but they're really just text. And that's what we're doing here. So we'll get out of here. Boom. And as we saw, we got the move dude. And what that does is it takes a look at the direction uh, variable, which is controlled by hitting the arrow keys. 
and is de de depending what the variable value is, whether it's up, down, left, or right, we move, we change the y or x coordinates, and then print character. We'll put them back to one. I'm kind of partial to one. One. Print him on screen, and then if direction is is nothing, just return. So if you're not pressing a key, it doesn't move anything. It just leaves him where he is. Now we locate. 115 that's what it's uh row yeah row one column 15 to print direction using this here is interesting what that's telling us is it's going to print it but using this format in other words up to three digits so if we wanted to print just the one digit it would be one hashtag two digits two hashtags we want three digits so it's three di uh, hashtags and then x and y x2 y2 for mr dude's location Direction equals nothing, then return. So we'll run this. Boop, boop. Okay. There's Mr. Mr. Our dude there, and he's at currently at 10, 10. We move him up one. Now he just up, it was up 10, 9. So he's at column 10, row 9, row 8, 7, 6, etc., and warps around. If we move him left, then he's column 9, 8, 7. You get the idea, right, up, down, which none of this we really need. It's just to illustrate what's happening here when you hit up key, down key, left, right, whatever. Oh, let's turn off this annoying sound. So, I don't know about you, but I'm almost starting to see the, the basis of a game right here. Like maybe Mr. Derp, he's not a bad guy, he's just kind of clumsy. We don't want to get in this squash this and step on us. So maybe we need to... Uh, avoid him as we move around the screen. If he hits us, then we're screwed. Oh, got us. We're dead. Well, that takes a little more code, but we can get into that in a little bit. I think this we got the makings of a game here. Uh, let's one more quick pass through the code to talk about what's going on, and I'll let you go back to your lives and not listen to my dreary crap. So there it is. Uh, oh, but, uh, as mentioned, I've got here. I've got the title of the of the program here and uh, initialize program. These are just headers to visual reference so I can keep, you don't have to do this. I like to do it when I create a new program. In fact, I've created a template it just has this line, this line, and the subroutine line. Just so when I start a program, I know this is my initialize section. This is all the crap has to be done before the program starts. Here is the main loop, which basically just calls these two subroutine routines. That's all there is to it. And then the, all the different subroutines. There we go. The, there's the, uh, uh, of course, draw derp. That's the one that's done first to draw him and save him into that that array called derp. Next, you move derp around. Then we got the sound toggle up, down, left, right, and the move dude. So these all these subroutines, basically, they are they do the hard work of the program. And the main loop just decides, okay, we're going to do this or we're going to do that. Basically, he's like the boss of the office. He's the boss, Applesauce. And he decides, okay, call Mr. Move Derp. Now you do your thing. Now call Mr. Move Dude. You do your thing. And as, as above, so below. So from the top, def int, def define everything as integer just to speed things up. It doesn't have to worry about the fractional parts. Now we define all our keys. Keys 15, that's the the the... S key and that's the for S for sound obviously we turn the S key on and it would now once it's on we tell it on key 15 when the key 15 is pressed go sub sound toggle same thing here we define 16 as the up key up arrow key we turn it on and then on key up key go sub up define it turn it on go sub down same thing for all these up down left right arrows Dim derp that sets aside a, an array of memory to store the image into, Mr. Derp. Here's our variables we set up. Where is he? Where is he going? Uh, X2 and Y2, that, those are the, the current location of Mr. our dude. As sound is equal to 1, so sound is on to start. Direction is nothing. He's not moving anywhere. Go sub draw derp. That's where we draw the actual image and store it into the array. Then we draw the line. That's the box you saw around. See, see there's a perfect example. The line top left and bottom right corners 15 is is white and then b for box that's the line you saw around the screen or the box you saw around the screen i'm sorry locate sound on and then print using the the location you'll figure that out as you go 
main program, do, go sub move, go sub uh, move derp, move dude, loop while in key. Simple. So the subroutine draw derp, again, we set it in the screen mode 13. That's the graphics mode, 320 uh, column, yeah, 2300 col columns by 200 rows and 256 different colors. So we draw our circles, that's his, his face, his eyes, his mouth, everything else. Line, that's the line across the top of his mouth, so it's a little D shape. Paint, the paint's the different colors, it's in this case 14. Now this is interesting. Paint, that's where it starts painting. It's basically one pixel, pixel somewhere inside the area you want to paint. That's the color you're painting, and that's when to stop. So in other words, it starts painting 14, yellow, until it sees a yellow pixel. That's how it knows not to paint the whole screen. It just paints inside that circle. This one here, paint 15 or white until it sees 14. So that's the, the white of his eyes. In other words, inside these circles here, it starts painting white until it sees yellow. That's the color of his face. And then here's the other one for the other eye. Circles for his mouth, everything else. Paint, paint, that paints the color of his mouth. P set, uh, not sure what those do offhand. Oh, that's the, his iris, the little iris of his eyes. The black, the pupil, I should say. It's really the pupil of his eyes. Paint, paint. Now, here's the line for his, his tooth. Up left, bottom right corners. It's 15, which is white. Box fill, so it's a nice fill box. It's his tooth. Now we get derp, and this is a good point here. Now we decide, we're going to put derp into that array. How do we know what size array to make? Well, simple. I just went up here. And initially I wrote dim derp and I put something like 10,000, some absurdly large number in there. That was way too big, too much memory, I was wasting it. So I ran and it worked. Okay, if 10,000 works, I then changed it to derp 5,000, still ran. Changed it to 2,000, still ran. 1,000, still ran because that's pretty close to the minimum. Then I tried dim derp 500 or 500 elements, didn't work. Well, now I know it's got to be somewhere between 500 and 1,000. And I just narrowed in until I came up with 965. That's the minimum size. That's the minimum amount of memory that that image requires. This way, if I have a bunch of images around screen, I'm not wasting all this memory. There are formulas to figure that out. But to me, it's simpler just to try and cut it in half, cut it in half, cut it in half until it doesn't work. So, we got the, yeah, here we go. Draw derp, and again, remember, as I mentioned in the last video, like get, we click on that, boop, and go up to help, and I'm gonna see up here, help, uh, help, top, get. There's the, okay, now this is, it can get reads a file into random access or writes, now that's different, that's for getting and writing, writing and reading data from a file, and we'll get into that in another program, but then there's, Gret and put in graphics and step, etc. This tells you all the, the uh, arguments you need or variables, uh, parameters you need to, to get the image and then put it on screen. So don't be afraid to, what's this thing do? Well, just go to help, help uh, menu and it'll tell you all about that. So we're getting derp at starting, at, it's a square box basically at this top corner, and that bottom corner and we call that derp. Whatever's on screen in that area, we're going to stuff into memory in an array called derp. Now we have our image saved, like a snapshot, basically. And then when we go to move derp, we clean our, clear our screen first, then move derp, we calculate his, his X and right position. If the sound is on, we play a sound, and then we find his new position. We put derp P set, which that we'll get into another time. But basically, that's... Uh, forcibly puts the image over whatever else is on screen. If uh, the dude was there, we put him there. Well, it'll obliterate the dude. You won't see him anymore. Now, for D equals 1 to 2,000. Again, just waste a little time so your eyes can see the image. And then put derp again, the same spot that makes him disappear. Come through again. We calculate a, loop, calculate a new location. Put him on screen for a while. Put him again to make him disappear. Again, again, again. Just move him around the screen. Sound toggle, we talked about that. That's sound equals one minus sound. So whatever sound happens to be, we set this to one. And if one is already, a sound is already one, then one minus one equals zero. Now it becomes zero. If sound is zero, then one minus zero equals one. So sound becomes one. That's a toggle. It just toggles one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Locate, that tells the message is sound on, sound off. And it, again, if the sound 
up here, yeah, still on screen, sound, if it's one, then play the sound. If not, if it's anything else, really, play no sound. That's how we turn the sound on and off. Okay, back to here, we've got our, our direction uh, subroutines. We've got up, we just set direction to up, down, turns it, sets it to down, left and right, and then returns. So basically, whatever it was called from this point in the, in the program, it goes here, sets it how it needs to be, and returns right back to where it started. Now, move dude uh, looks at the, the variable direction, which we determine up here. Looks at the variable, and if it's up, it does that. If it's down, it does that. In other words, it either changes the X or the Y coordinates, depending if it's up, down, left, right. And prints him on the screen. If we did character two, that would be that white character, and this is like the hollow character. Uh, well, you saw I did 72, that was a capital H. So whatever character we want to put on screen, that's what get printed there. If direction is nothing, then just return. So we uh, go here and locate the direction. And here, when we're done with all this, it sets direction to nothing. That's so it doesn't constantly keep moving, 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 moving. If I take this out, watch what happens here. Boop. And we'll run. Start. Yeah, center of the screen here. Let me zoom out a little bit now. At the moment, direction is zero, so he's not, or it's null actually. It's mute that sound. If I press up, now it just keeps moving up. If I press down, it keeps moving down. Left again, keeps moving left, and here keeps moving right. Well, that's really not good for us. So we escape out of here. Re-enable this line. If you notice, I just put a, an asterisk to make this, as far as Cubase is concerned, this is a comment. It just ignores it. That's a handy technique for temporarily like disabling a line. What does this line do? Let's disable it. Oh, that's what it does. We want this, so we backspace, get rid of that apostrophe, and now when we run, each time it moves at one space, it then sets it to, to blank, so it doesn't do anything. Basically resets it to nothing. And here we go, he stopped, we move one spot. By the way, you can also just hold the key down, and after a moment, it'll start zooming along like this. Just holding the key down. But that's that's part of DOS, it worries about all that stuff, the key presses and, and repeats. So that's the program. Like I said, uh, when the next one, we'll talk a little more about possibly coming up with a game. We got the little dude moving on the screen, and Derp's going to just bounce around, do his thing, and you want to stay away. He's like a big elephant in the room. You want to stay away from where he'll sit on you. Nobody wants that. All right, so, uh, well, as I mentioned before, you know, there's down here, there's the comments, and you just put your comments down there. If you have questions, say, hey, what the hell are you talking about? And I'll try and answer. So, so long, guys. Bye-bye, suckers. See you later. Bye.